So, um, Dr. Nick, everyone loves tomatoes. Oh, and absolutely. actually, I believe I that, that, yeah, <laughs> that's, the, that's the criteria. If you can grow tomatoes, yeah. everything else follows on, doesn't it? Right. So we've got some tomatoes here. Once again, you're growing them in biochar bags? Yeah. 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 We're testing biochar as a growing medium for mm. tomatoes. Yeah. And tomatoes is uh, one of the best crops yes. to grow in aquaponics. Mm -hmm. We've got very, very good results with tomatoes. I started working with tomatoes when I was still with the government uh, uh, almost 20 years uh, ago. Uh -huh. And um, the tomatoes just love aquaponics. Yeah, they do. They're but you know, people that start out in aquaponics often have trouble with tomatoes because they don't have their biology right. And they're not, they're not, well, they don't have their biology correct. You know, they're uh, yeah, a, brand, right. a brand new system. That's right. And they just plant tomatoes straight away and it doesn't no, work. And, no, no. Yeah. I, as a matter of fact, uh, I was a reviewer of uh, quite a few uh, manuscripts sent to me by uh, journals. And I rejected most of them because they compared uh, hydroponics and aquaponics. They started uh, uh, fresh aquaponics, just uh, put fish and put plants and start growing. But uh, the whole idea of aquaponics is creating a new system. If you just take fish and connect this fish tank to plant uh, bed, it won't work because you don't have ecosystem. Yeah, you don't have it's, any, yeah. Absolutely. You need to mature, to wait when the system matures, which it forms uh, their, uh, what we call a micro uh, biome. Mm -hmm. uh, their uh, group of many, many different kinds of microorganisms which live in concept and which link fish and plants together. Mm -hmm. Their microbes uh, play an absolutely pivotal role in... Uh, like they would out in a sure. rainforest, for example. Absolutely. You know, the, nobody has to go out there and throw fertilizer around, do they? Absolutely. So it's the absolutely. biology that does it. And mm. that's all nutrient recycling, because in uh, rainforest, there are 90% of all nutrients not in soil. Yeah. They're on uh, there. Yeah. So that um, their trees shed their leaves their microbes, bacteria, convert this organic material into soluble uh, minerals and uh, it allows plants to grow. That's a, actually a very good example. And, and that's more, a, uh, aquaponics basically. Yeah, that's right. And the good part about it is there's, there's no waste again. Absolutely. Because uh, I always say to my students, you know, because they, they say, oh, will it work? Well, you don't see a government department that's uh, tasked with the job of running into a rainforest once a week and throwing fertilizer around yeah, Absolutely. So biology yeah. is the key to it all. Absolutely. It? Yeah. And nevertheless, you see a, a beautiful, flourishing uh, And a variety. System. Yeah, a and nobody, you're absolutely yeah. right, nobody fertilizes it. Yeah. It exists. Another, another good um, example I give, um, if somebody went to a wetland uh, would say in Ontario, mm -hmm. and uh, the plants in the wetland grow as almost as tall as myself. The aquatic plants and growing in swamps and bogs, and they are beautiful. They have a perfect uh, green color uh, that no any kinds of any synthesis uh, of deficiency. And if you measure nutrient level in this water, guess what? Nothing. It will be zero. <laughs> it will be close to nothing. And uh, nevertheless, uh, these plants are flourishing. And because flourishing. it's happening down there. That's right, it's happening yeah. in the root zone. And because of, again, this beneficial microflora, beneficial microbes, which help plants to acquire those nutrients. In a form too that the plants can take up, that's another thing. That's right. Because a lot of artificial fertilizers, the plant actually can't take it up very well. That's right. A lot of it's wasted. Uh, absolutely. Uh, if you look at uh, hydroponic um, operation, and uh, they produce very good yields, so the technology works. But the downside of this technology, huge amount of waste mm. of nutrients, mm. because they have to flush out their uh, used uh, nutrient solution. Mm. Even if they recycle it, after some time, they have to flush it out. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to flush out any water in aquaponics. And I showed As we you. saw inside, 15 yeah, that's years. Right, 15 mm. years. Amazing, Small. really. Yeah, that's a, that's a difference between food production system based on ecosystem approach 
and the phone monoculture. Now, if we can just wrap up, Dr. Nick, what I'm understanding from you is that you've got a paper coming out sometime soon on, yep, yep. on the use of biochar, and yep. I'm sure the industry will be just waiting to see that. You're also doing some interesting stuff with biodigestion, a lot yep. of science going into that. Uh, so there's some really amazing things happening here at, yep. at Lethbridge. And it's not stuff that's um, out of space, as you said earlier. Yeah. It's stuff that's actually on the surface quite simple. Absolutely. But how to replicate that in a commercial way is yeah. what you guys are about, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Our major focus is uh, growers, people who may who, who produce. Yeah, who want to make a living out of this. That's right. Yeah. And we want to help them to be more sustainable.